Back in the early 2000s, EA Sports was an absolute powerhouse when it came to video games. You have games like MVP Baseball 2005, which is considered to be one of the greatest baseball games ever made. Then you have games like Madden 2005, which is considered to be the best Madden ever made. The Tiger Woods series always killed it. The NHL series was going strong and eventually would beat out the NHL 2K series for the number one hockey game. And yes, NBA Live was never as dominant as NBA 2K was. It was still a very solid basketball title. And then, oh, we had Knockout Kings, which later became Fight Night, which is an amazing boxing series. And of course, you can't forget the NASCAR series, which were fun games to play in their own. But one of the main franchises, one of the main series that really stuck out was the NCAA football series. And yes, everybody knows there was a lawsuit. NCAA 14 was the last one that we got and it's crazy in price and it's a phenomenal college football game. However, the games that came out on the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and original Xbox, well, these games were nothing to scoff at. You had NCAA 2002, which came on the scene and was just a really solid football game. Similar to the way Madden 2001 was, this was the first entry into the college football game on the PlayStation 2. NCAA 03 then came out featuring Joey Harrington on the cover, and well, he was a bust, and the game wasn't, but it wasn't all that it could be. It was an excellent football game, but there was still more they could do. And then we received NCAA 2004 with Carson Palmer, racing the front. Do you remember every year that you looked forward to the NCAA football game being released? Only to like a month later have Madden football game released? It was a great time. What a time to be alive and play video games. Now the NCAA college football games were released annually, typically about a month before the Madden football game came out, as well college football starts just a few weeks before the NFL season does. So it was always an event to buy the NCAA college football game, play the hell out of it, and then buy Madden when it came out a short time later. And it wasn't like it is now where it was just a cash grab. The games were absolutely unique and different, and they were a blast to play. And for me, it always seemed like the NCAA games were kind of test beds for the Madden games, even though the NCAA games for me personally were always more enjoyable and fun to play than the Madden series. There was just something unique and different that made the series feel different and unique. One of my favorite memories is playing this game with a friend of mine in high school. He bought the game, I bought the game, and then we had one franchise going that the whole object of us playing the game was to reach the national championship and play against each other. And what a season, what a series it was. And I am proud to say, at the end of the day, I ultimately lost. That's right, his LSU Tigers beat my Texas Longhorns, but it was a great series. This is what made NCAA great, were events and things like this that made it so much fun and so unique and it was an absolute blast. And that type of situation is just unheard of today. I mean, really, how often are you gonna get a couple friends together to play an extremely old sports game just in hopes of playing each other in the national championship? It's not gonna happen. Now, with my personal memories out of the way and all of that being said, it's time to review NCAA 2004 20 years later. How does it play? How does it hold up? Is it still fun to play? Let's find out. Graphically, I think the game still looks really well. The character models, yeah, again, it's not gonna win a ton of awards by today's standards, but 20 years ago, the character models here looked fantastic. And I know this was like back in a generation where you still had to use your imagination just a little bit, but they were fun to look at back then, and for me personally, they're still fun to look at. 
Now, I am playing this game through a HDMI adapter and my Elgato on a flat screen TV with my TV set to max out where it's a full picture and it looks phenomenal. The Elgato transfers it and cuts it down to where you're getting the kind of footage you see now. But I can say that for me personally, 20 years later, playing it through an HDMI adapter with the screen stretched, I know that's a lot to do. It looks awesome and it's so much fun to kick back and look at these visuals as you play the game. The graphics for me stand the test of time and still look good. Now on to the sound. Yes, you have all of the school fight songs, which are awesome in itself. And then you have the amazing commentary by Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreet. Okay, so let me just say that yes, it's very repetitive what they say and what they talk about, but just like Pat Summerall and John Madden, the voices of these two calling a college football game, it's music to my ears. It's something that even as repetitive it is, I still don't mind listening to it. I still don't mind hearing their voices. And with the fight song, and with all of the sounds, the tackles and the hits, it gets a pass. I think it does very well. And again, I think it stands the test of time. And now on to one of the most important categories that I look at when I review a game is the controls. How does it control all of these years later? And is it still accessible and easy to play? And again, I'm playing this on the PlayStation 2. So let me just say that this game on the GameCube, the controller doesn't feel as flawless. The PlayStation 2 controller doesn't feel that well either. However, playing this game on the original Xbox, the controls hand up perfectly. They're so easy to use, it's so easy to navigate through the menus, it's so easy to move your player around, roll out of the pocket, throw down field, use your cutbacks and your jukes. It just works so much better on the Xbox than it does the other consoles. That's not a knock on the other consoles. All I'm saying is that it plays better on the Xbox. This is a game that for me was really geared towards the original Xbox. The passing controls feel very simple. However, be warned that playing this game on the harder difficulties, the pocket collapses very, very quickly. So you better be able to throw that ball down the field or roll out to make a play. That's where the controls really step up and really come into play. Blitzing is fun and while blasting the quarterback never gets old. Controlling your safety or a corner down the field, just heads up, be careful because it's very easy with the controls to misjudge a pass and you will get smoked. You will get left hung out to dry by the offense. Again though, if you're gonna play this game in 2023, I highly recommend you play it on the original Xbox as the controls for that system are just, they're almost flawless. They're almost perfect. On to the gameplay. With multiple modes to play, franchise, play now, rivalry games, and mascot games, there is plenty here to keep you coming back. This was the start of the NCAA games starting to have a deep franchise mode. Yes, by today's standards, it's seriously lacking, but 20 years ago, this was huge. And if you're playing this game in 2023, well, franchise mode is pretty much where you're gonna spend all of your time. Something as simple as the introduction of the Sports Illustrated magazine on your franchise homepage was phenomenal. It was something of genius. It was so simple, but it made a huge impact on the gameplay. Playing every week and having great games, putting up a ton of points. You were so eager to find out if your team made the front page of Sports Illustrated. And when it did, it felt epic. Scrolling through the magazine, seeing the Heisman Trophy votes, seeing the division rankings, seeing the poll system, it was just something that it was so simple, but it was there and it made the game just have so much replay value. My favorite was always the Heisman watch. I loved having a quarterback just slowly move up the ranks in hopes that I did win the Heisman. Mascot mode may seem pretty cheesy, but it is fun in itself, especially if you can somehow manage to get a local game going. And then, well, practice mode, 
You may think it's redundant, but I do highly recommend going through the practice mode several times, especially to get the option and the triple option and some of the wide receiver screens down because you're gonna really need those as quickly as the pocket collapses. You're gonna need to know how to do all of that to really be successful in the game. Overall, NCAA 2004 was the very beginning of the NCAA franchise really starting to take off. 05 and 06, all of them had their own unique improvements, but 2004 was where it really started. The gameplay is addictive and it leaves you wanting to play just one more game. Fight songs, the touchdown celebrations, is something that for me, I was addicted to and I just love playing the game. NCAA 2004 is not only one of the best NCAA games, it is one of the best football games on that generation of consoles. NCAA 2004 may not be a masterpiece, but it's pretty dang close. So with that being said, if you liked the video, click the subscribe button, click the bell for notifications for when all of the latest Lame Dad videos drop. And as always, take care, be good, and we will see you all next time.